The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. The Buffalo Bills have traded Stefan Diggs. What does that mean for the Bills? And more importantly, are the Jets now the favorites to win the AFC East? We're going to talk about that and much more. It's the Jake Asman Show, and the Buffalo Jet fans are going to join me. So let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. I'm here because I believe in this team. I believe in Coach Sala. I believe in the direction of Joe Douglas and what the Coach has done the last couple of years. I mean, he's building something special the right way with the right values, you know, the right type of leadership. He's here to be the best quarterback I can be to lead and to inspire the guys around me. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jets. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jets bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, uh, here we go, Jet fans. Hit the like button if you're thrilled that the Buffalo Bills are seemingly imploding. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because, trust me, we're going to talk about the Bills imploding over the next couple of weeks. I kid, I kid, but not really. All right, joining me right now to talk about the news of the day in the NFL, the Bills trading away Stefan Diggs to the Texans is the great Buffalo Jet fan who joins me now. BJF, what's going on, man? Oh, it's a good day to be a Jet fan, man. It, it definitely a pendulum swinging move, it feels like, in the AFC East. And um, it's it's wide open, man, completely wide open. I, I think the Jets have the best roster. And people say on paper. Well, on, on paper is all we have right now. So everything, everything we talk about until September is on paper. I think the Jets have the best roster in the division. Uh, it's the first time I've felt that way since uh, that you could even really discuss it since 2015, honestly. When you look at this deal, you're in Buffalo, so it's a great uh, perspective that you present. You know, plenty of Bills fans. What's the reaction there? Because seemingly, Stefan Diggs leaving the Bills makes them a lot worse of a football team because when you look at their receivers right now, and it ain't great. It reminds me of the Jets wide receiver room with like Sam Darnold in 2018 or, or 2019. It, it ain't pretty. Yeah, it's a mixed bag from Bills fans. There's uh, some meltdowns. There's some copium of how like it's secretly a good thing for them. Look, obviously, uh, there he must have been a malcontent behind the scenes for them to do this because it's like a $30 million dead cap hit um, for a player who... Uh, definitely declined a little bit last year down the stretch, but is still comfortably a top 15 receiver in this league and has been since he's been in Buffalo. He's been one of the top five receivers in production and his target share is, has been as high as anybody's. And now you look at they lose Stefan Diggs, wide receiver one. They lose Gabe Davis, wide receiver two. They lose a starting offensive lineman and Mitch Morris. They lose both of their starting safeties in Por Poyer and Micah Hyde. And I think this is probably the the worst their roster has been since they became like the, this contending level team. And I think it's the most competitive the division will be, uh, you know, since the Patriots kind of passed the torch to the Bills a couple of years ago. Among the players the Bills have now moved on from this offseason, Stefan Diggs, Jordan Poyer, Tredavious White, Mitch Morris, Gabe Davis, Tyrell Dotson, and Leonard Floyd. I mean, this is a brand new football team, not to mention the fact that to get rid of Diggs, the Bills now have $43.896 million in dead money. So maybe eventually they'll have flexibility and they can figure things out. But for 2024, this is a huge, huge blow to their offense. And I get it. Josh Allen's still an awesome quarterback, but he's not Mahomes. This will not be, you know, Mahomes loses <laughs> Tyree Kill and then wins 
back-to-back Super Bowls. You look at the receivers right now for Buffalo, and yeah, they got the two tight ends, but they don't have a whole lot there. Sure, they could hit on someone in the draft, but man, anyone who's calling Stephon Diggs washed, the guy had over 100 catches and 1,100, almost 1,200 yards last year. He's still, as you said, one of the 10, 15 best receivers in the league. Yeah, I think definitely when they when they changed offensive coordinators, um, when they fired um, Dorsey and they switched to Brady, his production d- definitely took a hit, and they featured the the tight ends and the running backs more in the passing game. And I, I imagine that maybe that had something to do with it. But yeah, man, he's st- he's still a really good player, and he's been he's been durable. Let's think about him; he plays every single week, um, and he had his way with uh, the Jets defense in that first matchup. I think he had 10 catches and that's probably sauce Gardner's worst game as a pro, you know, Stefan Diggs is his, he's savvy. He's crafty. He's one of the best route runners in the league. And yeah, Josh Allen is not Patrick Mahomes and Sean McDermott isn't Andy Reed. And I believe the Buffalo bills, at least when they hold every now and then a, and a flag is called. So the, the chief looking for the, to the chiefs as a blueprint is kind of silly. People say, Oh, well they did it without any wide receivers. It's like, yeah, okay. You have the best quarterback and, and coach in the league with a, with a top five defense, the best defensive coordinator. It's just not, it's not something to replicate. And I, I think that, again, I think the Jets have the best collection of talent on the roster. And you mentioned Leonard Floyd, who had 10 sacks last year. He was their most productive edge. Uh, so it's, man, it's, they're going to, like, they're going to be a playoff team as long as they have a top five quarterback in his prime in Josh Allen. But I do think they're going to be looking back at that 13 second game for a while. It could be like, you know, the Seattle Seahawks wishing they just handed the ball off to Marshawn Lynch down there at the goal line. That may have been, may have been their moment. It, it, it certainly feels that way. And look, the Jets obviously have to prove it on the field. But for anyone sitting here and trying to belittle the Jets' chances, to me, that's total BS. I mean, look, look at what they've been able to do the last couple of years with Zach Wilson as the primary quarterback. They have beaten the Bills head-to-head the last two years. The Dolphins are frauds. They went 1-5 and five <laughs> against teams with a winning record. There's no reason why a Jets team that's proven the last two years, their floor with historically inept quarterback play is seven wins. There is no reason why they can't now go from seven to 10 or 11. And I think with the way the division is right now, it's not going to take 13 wins to win the AFC. I think if the Jets can get to 11, they're AFC East champions. I really believe that. Yeah, I think the Bills, Jets, and Dolphins are, I think, probably all within like two games of each other. Uh, given health and you know you say given health well to a tongue of my little played all the games last year but he he was good for missing a month the previous three seasons every year and obviously you don't know how many you don't want it to happen but you'd be silly if it didn't cross your mind of what's going to happen if he is concussed you know for a third time the Patriots don't even have to worry about and I really look at the trenches I look at this Jets this Jets pass rush can compare it to the rest of the division and it's really no comparison especially with the Bills losing um, Leonard Floyd and the, the Dolphins, they have their two edge rushers from last year in mean, Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb, who are both really good at good years, had season ending injuries. Like the, the Chubb was the, um, last game of the year. He's probably gonna be out the whole year. Phillips popped the Achilles like long after Rogers. He, we won't even see him until at least the bye week. And then he probably won't be a hundred percent. They lose Christian Wilkins. So you're talking three of their top pass rushers, um, from last season, and now Jalen Ramsey, another he's third on the wrong side of 30, um, coming off of an injury last year. Xavier Howard is gone. Miami lost three starters on their offense, like that. Mike McDaniel and Tua and Jalen Waddle and um, A Chain, they, they'll probably be enough to generate like a, an offense that could score points in good weather against bad defenses. But man, that Miami got gutted. Um, that's probably the biggest drop off in talent in, in the entire division. and. The, the Jets, you, they have the best pass rush. Their offensive line is just as capable as anybody else's. And I think probably the second best weapons to Miami now that um, Diggs is out of the division. If you're watching this live right now, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Gus Buster Umbrella Hotline is open. We'll take some calls. I'm going to say it. If you tell me Aaron Rodgers plays 15 games, BJF, and Tyron Taylor plays the other two, I think the Jets are hosting their first playoff game in over 20 years. Come January, I think the Jets should be the favorites to win the division. I truly feel that way. They won't be because out of respect to Buffalo, the Vegas odds are going to favor the Bills. I checked before the show. Buffalo is still minus 160, or excuse me, plus 160 to win the division. The Jets, at least on DraftKings, were plus 200. So they have the second highest odds. But man, I would take the Jets 
Look, I, I, if you tell me Aaron Rodgers is healthy, this is a team that won seven games without him last year. They clearly have improved this roster, and him being back alone changes everything. Health being the biggest thing, but as you said, that's for every team. I think the Jets are winning the division. I really do. I'd be disappointed if they didn't, because if not, if not now, then when? That that's really the question. And the Jets are the Jets. You know, we talk about this two-year window with Aaron Rodgers, but more so, more, more so this year. If you do look at Hassan Reddick, I think it's going to be a one-year rental. DJ Reed last year of his contract, um, like Tyler Conklin last year of his contract, Michael Carter coming up on the last year of his contract. So the the Jets, uh, they've uh, and they, the one-year deals of Tyron Smith and Mike Williams. So it man. They've pushed the chips in the middle, and you got you got to go win eleven games. You know, go four and two in your division, sweep the Patriots, and host a playoff game. That is a, an absolute fair ask and a realistic one for this uh, this team. And now the pressure, I think, shifts to Robert Sala because I think so far this offseason, given health again, I think Joe Douglas has done a good job. Joe Douglas has certainly done a good job, and now we go into the year with the only question you have. Do they have the right coach to get them over the top? I think the roster's there. Health, obviously, withstanding. We get that. But you're right. The the pressure for this Jets team to not just sneak into the playoffs, but to truly win the division, or if they're not winning the divi- division, at least winning a playoff game, I mean, it's enormous. This has to be a year where it all comes together for this head coach. Otherwise, he could be out of a job at the end of the year. Yeah, I would say winning a playoff game is the bare minimum. Even if you win the division and you lose your – it's just with the seven teams making the playoffs to me, you know, I, I saw Kenny Pickett and Joe Flacco in the, in the playoffs last year. So you can drag yourself to the playoffs. That's not enough. You got to at least win a playoff game and you got to be one of the final eight teams standing for otherwise the season is a failure, in my opinion. Hit the like button if you think the New York Jets are going to win the division. Hit it, baby. Today's show presented by our friends at Huga House. Get the hat that Aaron Rodgers is always rocking by going to H-U-E-G-A house.com and use promo code ASMIN at checkout so you will get 15% off on all their vintage-inspired hats. Cherish the little things with Huga House. Promo code ASMIN at checkout for 15% off. You ready for some calls, BJF? Because this fan base is fired up as the Bill fan. <laughs> Drinking a lot of copium right now to try and comprehend how their number one wide receiver is now Curtis Samuel. It's crazy. And, uh, you know, they've been to half the number of AFC championship games as, as Mark Sanchez did in his first two years. So hang the banner for that. Hang the banner is right. Here we go. Gary's first up today. What's up, Gary? What's up, Jake? Buffalo. Um, I, the, the optimism on the, on, on the show starts so well. And then you say – if we get out of the first round, it's a good season. No, it's Super Bowl a bust. We got Aaron Rodgers and a top five defense. Like that's what Kansas City has in Mahomes. Plus, we have way more tools and way more weapons than the Chiefs do. Like if yeah, they but the lose- Chiefs have maybe the greatest quarterback of all time, Gary. To be fair, they have playoff pedigree. They have Andy Reid as a Hall of Fame coach. Like they're still unknowns with this Jets team. They should win the division, but they're still unknowns after that. Is my point. I understand. We have a top five quarterback of all time by any metric. Is he still a top five quarterback in the league, though? I think he's top 10, but we got to see it. I just feel like as Jet fans, we're all like a little, we don't, it's too good to be true. Like it's, it's all good. The the, the train's going to come off the, off the tracks here at some point. But like, if this wasn't the Jets, if this was some other team and you were just looking at this team, what would you say about this roster? You'd say that is a damn good roster. That is a Super Bowl favorite you, you objectively you would right top five defense you got an awesome receiving court you have a top three top five running back in the league and a rebuilt offensive line that now has two pro bowls a, a possible hall of famer on the offensive line right like there's nothing if, if this team it's anything other than winning the afc is a disappointment to me I, honestly, like that that's my expectations. Right? So if like, they lose in Kansas City in the AFC title game, you're going to be disappointed? You're going to say it's a, not a good season? It, no, it's not a good season. It, it, it's not a good season. Kansas, I, City's, I, Kansas City's beatable. That's fine. <laughs> I, I mean, it's fine. That's just, that's, look, they are beatable. They've also won the Super Bowl the last two yeah. years, and they're going for a three-peat. So, like, I don't know. I just, I just think the first step, BJF, win the AFC East, get us a home playoff game, 
So you and I are popping some Henny together in the parking lot, <laughs> saluting to the New York Jets. Yeah, I hear what Gary's saying. I mean, if if not now for a Super Bowl, then when? I just think like there's a difference between what my hope and expectation is and then just what like I would realistically predict. Because if it was another team, it, it all depends on where Aaron Rodgers ranks among NFL quarterbacks. If Aaron Rodgers is like the comes in and he's like the fourth best quarterback in the NFL, then yeah, then I I think the Jets would probably be Super Bowl favorites, legitimately. Um, but I don't know that. I think there's a wide range of what the version of Aaron Rodgers we could see. If you're telling me Aaron Rodgers is going to be, you know, the eighth to tenth best quarterback in the NFL who can play 14, 15 games, I would sign for that right now. I, I would take that right now because it has been um a down year that he was banged up and then the Achilles. So and then before that, it was like the two best quarterback seasons ever, back-to-back MVPs. So where in the middle, I don't think anyone's expecting 48 touchdowns like he had in 2020. Um, I don't think anyone's expecting, at least I'm not expecting him to fall off a cliff and, and, and be done like Peyton Manning's last year in Denver. So where in the middle is Aaron Rodgers? Like that's that's a big variable. And then um, and then the head coach. So the, the, for those reasons, I'm not saying like they're, they're Super Bowl favorites, but they, they have a claim to be as good of a team as anybody outside of the chiefs in the AFC. We talked about our division and I'm sorry, Lamar Jackson has not been able to put together an NFL caliber passing offense in the postseason. That is what it is. It's not an opinion. It's not a take. It just is what it is. I know Aaron Rodgers can at least do that. Um, so anyone besides Kansas city, the jets have as much of a claim to Joe Burrow has his own injury problems. It's not like Kansas city or it's not like Cincinnati as the, the most, like San Francisco or 2022 Philly stacked roster either. But um, we'll see. I think those other teams, you probably just put them a little bit of head ahead just because they've proven it. 100%. Look, Kansas City is in its own category. <laughs> That's fine. But if you go through each team in the AFC and throw the Texans in there too, by the way, after this yeah. move, getting digs to go with Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Dalton Schultz, a very good offensive line, Joe Mixon. They added Daniel Hunter on defense to replace Jonathan Grenard. Houston is a really, really good football team that will not be an easy game for the Jets when they play in the regular season, which, by the way, I still think has a good chance to be week one. But, you know, I say all that to then say, you want to put Kansas City in their own tier? Every other team is right there. It's a year-to-year league. A year ago, the Houston Texans were a joke. They were a laughing stock. They had on the quarterback. Now look what they've been able to do. They were the betting favorites to have the second overall pick this year. Correct. (laughs) <laughs> and they want a playoff game. That's crazy. Division. So you hit on the quarterback. All of a sudden, everything looks better. It's why I try to tell the Jet fans, man, for all you people who want to tar and feather Robert Sala, the Texans, I saw some tweet from like Adam Rank today. Teams are going to be copying what the Texans do for years to come. So I'm like, you mean luck into CJ Stroud when they didn't yeah. want him? They wanted Bryce Young? You mean you mean blow the number one pick and then actually end up with a quarterback that you really didn't even want. Oh, you mean hire the Niners defensive coordinator who wanted to come to you because he had played for the Texans 17 years prior and still had family and a home in Houston. You mean that, you mean that scenario? Like, come on, man. So like, to me, it all comes down to quarterback. They keep Aaron Rodgers healthy. I think if you just look at the rosters, the New York jets are as talented as any team in the AFC. It's, it, I mean, it's undebatable. You know, I was trying to do, um, uh, I was trying to do a video of ranking the top 10 players on the Jets. And it's like, geez, I did one list. And I'm like, that looks good. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, oh, I forgot Michael Carter. Then I know I'm like, wait, no, AVT's not on here. No, I'm like, wait, CJ Mosey's not on here. It's it's a preposterous collection of, of talent. So Joe Douglas, we know what the record is. Um, so this is the year where we're not judging process. We're judging results. But this is as good as this, this Jets team has been. Like as most most star power at premium positions. I think probably since like the 98, 98, 99 team, because even in, um, you know, the, the Rex teams, we had Sanchez at quarterback who was, you know, for the most part, a liability that was elevated by a supporting cast. So probably the, if you factor in the, the weight of quarterback, probably since, you know, before the turn of the century. This fan base is incredible. BJF. Look <laughs> at this comment from Rob. How do we not go 17 and zero? Seriously, this team is stacked. AFC East champs <laughs> is a minimum. <laughs> I don't want to go 17 and 0, man. I don't want that pressure in the playoffs. So get one loss in there. <laughs> no, get, give me 14. Give me 14 and three. How's that? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll sign for that, man. But this is the same fan base. Rob was probably among the many who wanted everyone fired. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. If we start one and two, I'll. <laughs> 
<laughs> I might make I might make, have some some rants in there. It's uh, you, know, you know how it goes. When you lose, you're a loser. I suck. Joe D sucks. We all suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we got some super chats to get to. Best way to reach the show is always super chat. Thank you, Zach. He writes in with a super chat that says, "You know who doesn't think the Jets win the AFC East? Colin Cowherd." Well, guess Good. what? Colin Cowherd. When he picks against anything, that's a good thing. So the best thing to happen to the Jets is Colin to continue on his ways of just inaccurate things about the Jets, Salah, Rodgers, et cetera. But it's funny because he flip-flops all the time. Like two weeks ago, he said he really liked the moves they were making. And then the other day he said nine and a half wins is too high. And Aaron Rodgers is you know, not as committed as older quarterbacks of his generation, even though he's the second on oldest player to <laughs> – win an MVP award. So yeah, of course. Yeah. I think he just forgets what he says. And he just, it's just every day. It's just, what can I do to get clicks? Yeah. The, the jet, I mean, it's seriously people. The only argument I've seen against it's the people are just saying you're the Jets, So I don't believe it until I see it. So I do with what Gary said, I do believe to some extent, like if we, if it was, I don't know, literally any other team, uh, probably the national media would be a little bit higher. I just don't even, and I think there's still, I don't think people know how good Brees Hall is. I don't think the average NFL fan knows how good Garrett Wilson is. Agreed. I I don't th- even a guy like Tyler Conklin like no casual fans don't know who Tyler Conklin is, but the dude's been played every game and he catches everything and he's he's been top twelve among tight ends and yards and catches the past two years with not only with the quarterback play but with the offensive line play and then with Hackett who wouldn't even throw to a tight end or Brees Hall who they didn't even figure out Hackett couldn't even figure out who he could catch until post Thanksgiving when you go look at his um catch production after they figured that out like Brees hall could have you know 75 like alvin kamara level production in this this offense it's i don't even know if Brees like if you're telling me who's the best running back in the nfl next year i'd probably say one christian mccaffrey i don't know if Brees hall isn't second he should be second you're right i mean once Nathaniel Hackett realized Brees Hall has two hands, I mean, we saw what he could do coming off. Now another year off the ACL. Like, yep, coming off the injury too. Tyrone writes in with a super chat. Thank you, Tyrone. He says, "Get your playoff tickets, playoffs at home, dude. Just give me that home playoff game, please." Imagine how loud it would be. I need it so badly, BJF. I want to win the AFC East. <laughs> well, if you think about how loud um, the the first drive of the home opener, this is before our souls were crushed, right? And we all still believed the first defensive drive, that the first third down, that the it sounded like it sounded like the Super Bowl, like that. It, it was deafening. So I can't even imagine that, like times ten. Uh, for this fan base, man, it's it, 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 and it's such a bummer because you saw that and then you saw the whole, the crowds like the rest of the year once we kind of fizzled out. So you could really see like how much of a home field advantage we truly can have if there's a reason to show up to games. Here's a comment that I love from James Alba, who's been an Asmaniac for seven months. Hey, for every Asmaniac that we get during the show, for every person that hits the join button and signs up, I'll do a swig of Henny celebrating the hopeful the hopeful demise <laughs> of the Buffalo Bills. But James has been an Asmaniac for seven months. W- one ripple effect here is that the Jets might be more inclined to take a weapon to block Buffalo and Kansas City, who could both be looking for a wide receiver between 10 and 72. I don't know if that is something the Jets are cognizant of necessarily with Kansas City. Maybe there's some thought to that with Buffalo, potentially. But I think at the end of the day, the Jets have the talent to do what they got to do. And I think it's just about them picking a player that fits them. And I don't know if they're going to be like factoring with the chiefs or certainly what the bills are going to do. It's an interesting thought, but I don't know how much that actually impacts what Joe Douglas will decide to do with the picks. Yeah. Just because of where the teams are picking. I I don't know. I mean, the bills would have to come up a, a pretty, they'd have to give up a haul to come up and get anywhere near the jets at um, pick 10. So the jets are probably just going to make the, the best pick for them. I don't know how much um, the bills or chiefs will factor into that, but yeah, man, and the Chiefs of Rasheed Rice, you could you could definitely pencil them in for a receiver. And I think the Bills, um, you know, seems like it might be a record for receivers taken in the first round this year. It really could be. There's no doubt about that. Let's get back to your calls right now. A bunch of people want in on the conversation, so let's try and rattle off as many as we can. Peter Castro is up next. Hello, Peter. Hello, BJF and uh, Jake. How are you guys? What's up, man? Listen, we're going to go back to the same issue again. We have one – this team is loaded – 
there's no way that they should not be in close to the Super Bowl. I don't care who they play. This team is absolutely loaded. There's only one thing that gives me hesitation, and you know what that is, the head coach. He's a prof- he, He's a very – he talks well. He's very nice, but he's like a professional bullshit artist, and he does not get the job done. I watched him for three years. For three years, I'm not happy with him as head coach. And, I mean, if you, Jake, if you don't see it, you're blind. You make excuses for him. You say, oh – uh, well, look what he did with the defense. He's a coach of the whole team, not just the defense. Yeah, He's but got how to open he, his mouth when he, things Peter, aren't going right. Peter, Peter, yes, I, agree, I agree with you. He's the coach of the whole team. They won three of their final five games. They were starting Trevor Simeon down the stretch. How many games were they supposed to win with Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, and Trevor Simeon? That's my point to you. I'm not sitting here telling you he's Vince Lombardi, but he had a better record than Mike Rabel, and Mike Rabel's a better coach, but you need a quarterback at the end of the day to evaluate what you have as a coach. That's why I'm just saying, like, Salah's grade is incomplete, but he has some good tendencies of a good head coach. Let's not act like he's done nothing since he's been here. Well, well, when we when we had to go to Zach Wilson, and we knew we had to go to Zach Wilson, why didn't they tell the offense around him? They couldn't do it. They, they didn't even try. They he's didn't even terrible. Attempt. Because he can't play, Peter. He stinks. Listen, no one wants him. He's... If he's, if, he, if they could tailor the offense around him, why is he still on the Jets right now, Peter? How come if he's such a great quarterback that we could tailor the, the offense around, baby, we could run the, the 99 Rams offense around Zach Wilson? How come he's still on the Jets he, right now, Peter? There's, <laughs> there's no imagination whatsoever. None. So blame 31 other teams that don't have the same imagination. You wanted Robert Sala, a defensive guy, to come up. No, with I, 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 want, I wanted expertise. Hackett. I wanted Hackett as an offensive coordinator to do something, and he did nothing. Okay, how about Lafleur last year? Did you not see creativity and, and offensive success with every quarterback not named Zach Wilson? Josh Johnson threw for no. 300 yards and half a game two years ago. So you're gonna blame the whole thing? The whole every everything is Zach Wilson's fault. I'm gonna blame Zach Wilson. So you're for being falling one of the right worst into quarterbacks the trap. ever. You, one of the worst quarterbacks ever, Peter. His and how about one of the head. worst? And Tim Boyle somehow worse. That was the quarterback room last year. They went two and one with Trevor Simeon. It, Explain. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The quarterback room does stink, but Robert Salas stinks. He's not a head coach. <laughs> and and you know what? He'll, uh, he'll who who is the head coach, Peter? Year. Who is that coach? Bill Belichick? What's his record without Tom Brady? How's, how'd Mike Rabel do last year with three different quarterbacks? Oh, he had a worse record than Robert Sala? Car- like, Car- please. Grable, Grable, you, can't even, you can't even compare Grable and, and Sala. There's no comparison whatsoever. I, I, I think Mike Rabel is a better head coach. My point to you is that I don't know if Sala's not a good head coach because, by the way, he had How a better you record know? than because How do you not better, know, Jay? Because, because Robert Sala. You, are you watching built, the Jet games? Peter, Robert Sala. I, I, I put Peter on mute, so let him just yell and scream, and I'll make my point here. Robert Sala took over a team that was a borderline expansion-level team. They have gotten better each year. They are statistically a top five defense in the league and a top five special teams. He never lost the locker room. They finished winning three of their final five, and he did it with garbage quarterback play. What should the record have been, Peter? Give me a coach other than probably Mike Tomlin, who's a Hall of Famer. Okay, sorry, Robert Sala is not Mike Tomlin. But give me a coach that would have been <clears throat> with this crop of crap on offense and come back to me. Well, you think you think Robert, you think think Robert Robert Sala didn't lose the locker room? No, I mean, come on. He had he had Mike. He had guys walking around with Mike White T-shirts on. You they don't think won- that's losing the locker room? I don't. All- I, think, I think you want to say that's a mistake. Fine, but I'm talking specifically about last year. The, he didn't lose the locker room. They came back down ten after losing Aaron Rodgers on four plays into the season. They beat the Eagles last year. They beat the Texans. Like you act like Robert Soller is is, is Rich Cotight or Adam Gase. Give me a break. <laughs> Did you watch the Eagle game, how they Every won that step. game? Yeah, with a great defensive game plan by put together by Robert Salo and his staff. They won that game without Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed. They had guys like Craig James locking up receivers. Do you remember that, Peter? Clearly you don't. God, all right, I've spoken enough, Buffalo Jeff. Man. Please help me out. I, I got I, I got to take a swig of Henny after that call. Good God. Yeah. It feels like a, like a post game. You know, it's, uh, it's April, man. Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, with Robert Sala, look, if I was ranking the NFL head coaches from 1 to 32, he wouldn't be high on my list. I just don't have evidence to put it, put him that high. Um, I do think he, he does frustrating things. You know, I, I think um, personnel decisions 
Uh, it was a coaching decision to play Tim Boyle last year, who was the worst quarterback. You know, Ozama over Ruckert or, or uh, you know, not giving Izzy any chances over the, the ghost of Dalvin Cook. Um, I also think that, you know, showing up when your season was on the line mathematically and getting punched in the teeth 30 to nothing by a divisional opponent was was pretty egregious being uncompetitive last year in divisional games. So there's there's frustrating things about Robert Sala. And if he lost his job last year, I wouldn't have been shocked. But at the same time, you look at what we were dealing with last year. Look at look at. The quarterback room last year, Zach Wilson is a quarterback three. Even if he goes to another team, he's going to be a quarterback three most likely. I don't think he's a backup. I think he will be on a roster somewhere. He'll probably be inactive or like an emergency quarterback on uh, on game days. Trevor Simeon probably won't be in the league. Tim Boyle will be on a practice squad. He won't be on a 53. So the Jets played a, a QB three, a practice squad QB, and a guy who was off the couch who won't be in the league anymore last year. And then you go look at the the opening depth chart from last year. Makai Becton was right tackle one, unrostered. Dwayne Brown left tackle one, unrostered, probably done with football. Lincoln Tomlinson, left guard one, unrostered, probably done with football. Dalvin Cook, running back two, unrostered, probably done with football. CJ Uzama, tight end two, unrostered, probably done with football. Uh, uh, Randall Cobb, uh, wide receiver three, unrostered, probably never playing again. Miko Harmon, wide receiver four or five, whatever, unrostered, maybe never play again because of his off the field antics. Billy Turner, um, primary it's swing almost tackle. like the GM unrostered, pretty not poor in the roster. league anymore. Hey, Half it's the almost, freaking it, offense isn't even it, in the league anymore. It's amazing. <laughs> and, and, and people want Robert Sala to have the 99 Rams offense. Oh, they should. Why did they tailor the game plan around Zach Wilson? He sucks. Do you guys why didn't realize they tailor the game plan around Jake Hansen and Billy Turner? <laughs> 31 teams can have Zach Wilson right now for nothing, all right? This this bottle of Henny that I just bought for my New York City apartment is worth more than Zach Wilson is in a trade. And people are ripping Robert Sala. Look, if they don't win this year, he's going to be fired. But the idea that he's somehow this terrible coach, why did people keep signing with the Jets? Why did Rodgers want to come here and play for him? Like, to me, it, it's such nonsense, man. It's completely unfair. And I'm not saying he's great, but the way Douglas gets protected by many in this fan base and Sala takes all the bullets is total bullshit. It really is. And the, and look, man, if you if the Jets start one and three, you know, me and, and, and they have a healthy Rodgers, me and you'll be ripping Robert Sala. I think yep. it's just, it's it's tough because of the question that, and again, I, I already just I admit, went on a whole thing of how Robert Sala has many weaknesses and things that frustrate me. But what nobody can answer me is if I told you at the beginning of last year, you were going to start 13 different offensive line combinations and you were going to play uh, Zach Wilson, Trevor Simeon, and Tim Boyle for the duration of the season, what would your record prediction would have been? Because nobody would have said more than seven wins. Exactly. Nobody would have said that. Exactly. It just, <laughs> but, you know, you, you have people out there who are upset Robert Sala is, is not Mike Vrabel. Who won more games this past year? Oh, hey. that's right. The, the, the Jets did. Uh, why did Tennessee all of a sudden struggle? Did Mike Vrabel forget how to coach? Did Belichick forget how to coach? Or does quarterback mean more than anything else in all of sports to have success? Like, it's not that complicated, people. I'm not saying Sal is a great coach. I'm saying he's done some good things. There are things that concern me. At best, I could say it's incomplete. But the fascination that people have with Joe Douglas, and he gets to pick his next head coach, when he hired the guy in the first place, is asinine. And it's out of control stupidity from people in this fan base, and it needs to stop. Also, before you make another point, Hawk, Hawk writes in, Jake doesn't understand business contracts or how free agent season works. Trying to defend Zach still being on the Jets. Explain <laughs> Justin Fields. Explain Matt Jones. Explain any other quarterback who's been Kenny traded Pickett, ever. Desmond Ritter. Explain Kenny Pickett. Enough, Hawk. You're a moron. You're a loser. <laughs> Zach Wilson truther. And for that, we say, see you later. Into the shadow realm you go. Forget about his vaccine and political opinions. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. GFY. First word is go, and the last word is yourself. I can't believe this is where we're at in April, man. I can't. Zach Wilson debates. And Hawk knows my rule. He hangs out in my streams, too. After the 40-minute mark, we can't we can't argue about Zach Wilson after the 40-minute mark. So we're doing it way too early. But, yeah, it's crazy because <laughs> with, with Zach, you would think I, like – I didn't know you had that rule. That's yeah, amazing. That, it's the cutoff. Yeah, so I'll, I'll like, skip it. And I'm like, no, 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 not until 40 minutes. Um, <laughs> but it, it's amazing. You would have at least thought, like, for the Zach Wilson crew, like – a, a little bit of humble pie we're realizing that nobody is willing to give up a seventh round pick and five million because even if they thought he was a decent QB too, like say for instance, if Gardner Minshew or Jacoy Brissett were on, could be had for a seventh round pick and five million, they'd be, they'd be moved like that. Right. So nobody even thinks he can be a backup in year four. Like 
I almost feel like we're beating like it's almost like me and Zach Wilson at this point. Like it is what it is. Like, should we argue about Denzel Mims? I know, as, I do. Uh, I, I, I genuinely <laughs> feel bad how angry I have to be at Zach Wilson, which is like I don't dislike Zach. Like it, it, it was a bad pick. It didn't work out. I don't wish him ill will. I don't hate him personally. I just get so annoyed that. <laughs> He has just like these people that just blindly defend him. And then like I got to go on a rant yesterday because I got one Jet fan calling and being like, oh, Aaron Rodgers hasn't done enough to earn uh, your level of support for him. Like, I'm like, are you out of your mind? You're going to blindly defend Zach Wilson. But Aaron Rodgers is one of the greatest of all time, wanted to be here and took the largest pay cut in team sports history to be a Jet. I, I, He's done nothing to earn my loyalty. Are you not, like it just it drives me crazy how stupid. Some of the Wilson truthers are in this fan base. It's embarrassing. Well, well even look at the difference between Sam, the, how the, the league views Sam Darnold. Like Sam Darnold was moved for a two of four and a six, was picked up a, a $20 million fifth year option and just got a $10 million deal in Minnesota. And even if they take a rookie quarterback, Sam Darnold has a good chance to be the day one starter in Minnesota. Like, and Sam Darnold's not even good. So the ga- <laughs> and the gap between Darnold and Wilson is massive. Dude. It is, dude. The gap between Darnold and Wilson is is like the gap between Darnold and Aaron Rodgers. Like that's how. That's how it's crazy. Not, it's it not even that much of an exaggeration. Oh, no, like, oh, it's crazy. Let me get let me get to a couple super chats here, and then we'll get back to the calls. Jr. Jet writes in. Forget Hackett. Don't you think Middleton can develop Bowers? Isn't he a tight end coach? Speaking of Middleton, hit it as in the like button. Jet up. Ah, uh, here we go from Zach Wilson truthers. To the Brock Bowers discourse. So, look, I like Ron Middleton a lot, and I do think that's part of my reason why I want to see what Tyler Conklin and Jeremy Rucker could do with Aaron Rodgers throwing to them, and why I don't think Bowers is this huge need because I think the Jets have one really good tight end in Conklin and one with tremendous upside in Rucker. That if you take Bowers at 10, uh, Buffalo, all of a sudden it feels like you're just burning a third round pick from a couple of years ago with Jeremy Rucker. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not in the Bowers bros, but I, I will say I don't think to, in my opinion, I don't think Rucker would be a reason for me to not pursue Bowers. Like if they if they think he is legitimately a top 10 player and can be the dyna- a dynamic weapon who would primarily be like a slot player. So you'd probably have like Garrett Wilson and then Mike Williams outside with Bowers in the slot and then Conklin as your inline tight end and Brees Hall as your running back. Like, look, that, that gets me excited, man. Okay. If the, if the Jets draft Brock Bowers and be watching the highlights, I'll be coming around to it. I'll go up after two weeks. I'll probably have his Jersey. You know, I'm a fan. That's how it goes. Um, and Rucker, uh, you know, I like Rucker, but I mean, I, I don't, I wish we got to see more of him last year over Rucker and he got hurt year one. I think he's got like less than 20 catches in his, in his career. So he'd be the backup tight end. Maybe they could do some fullback stuff with him and, and maybe not roster Nick Bodden. So, I think there most likely will be an offensive lineman I'd rather take, or maybe if Romo Dunze is there, I would rather take Odunze than than Bowers. But I I don't think the tight ends that we currently have are my are my trepidation with Bowers, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally fair. I just think it adds to the thought of if you're gonna take a weapon over O line, might as well do it at receiver where Mike Williams is injury prone coming off the ACL and he's on a one year deal. So to me, it's like if you could get the receiver there, like Roma Dunze makes it like, oh, man, yeah. sign me the hell up for that. And it's a it's a cleaner transition to Odunze like and, and maybe that's lazy analysis, but I just think it's a higher it's a less risky move. It's if, if it's Odunze, but if it's not Odunze and Joe Alt is there, then uh, I mean, Bowers versus the next offensive lineman. I, there are guys like I like Latham. I'd probably go with him or Fashano maybe over Bowers, but he would probably be the next best pass catcher. Like I wouldn't take. Brian Thomas Jr. over Brock Bowers, personally. Interesting. If you become an Asmaniac, I'll do a swig of Henny on the air so we hopefully celebrate the demise of the Buffalo Bills. Day Boss has been an Asmaniac for seven whole months. Zach Wilson, worst quarterback ever. Uh, he's up there, man. As far as like quarterbacks who started the amount of games he started. like Zach's better than Tim Boyle or Christian Hackenberg or Bryce Petty. But yeah. of, of quarterbacks who started the amount of games he started, He's in rarefied air as far as what he's done in the league. He's there with Manziel, Jamarcus Russell, Ryan Leaf. I mean, it's sad because I think he's a better guy as far as like character and want and care than those guys. But that's where he is, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, and if you factor in like how modern passing stats have evolved, people show that meme with him versus Jamarcus Russell. And it's like Russell played in an era where like the passing stats were not nearly as inflated. I mean, Tom Brady was throwing twice the touchdowns at 40 than he was at 25. So it's, and, and it's funny too, people say, oh, only the Jets could ruin everybody. And I'm like, dude, 
only the Jets would allow Zach Wilson to muck about for 40 games. Yep. Like the 49ers saw Trey Lance in practice. They're like, nope, not good enough. Not to our standard. We refuse to put that on the field. Like he wouldn't have played somewhere else because they would, the, the standard of their, of what they can sh like show to the world is higher than Zach Wilson. That's the ironic part. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> Here for the memes. After Diggs traded, must go a Dunze at 10. Sign me up for that. Michael writes in at the last division title game versus Green Bay. Fun. Yeah, that was the win, and the Jets would win the AFC East if, ironically, they got help from the Patriots that day, which they did. Hopefully, the Jets get another home playoff game, and yeah. if they play the Colts again, let's beat them 41-0 like last time. How does that sound to you, BJF? Oh, man, getting nostalgic. <laughs> was that was that the year where – um? Where uh, we blew out Green Bay to get in. Yep, and then blew out Indy. Yeah. Oh, man. And then we, we lose to Oakland and Rich Gannon, I believe. Correct. Yeah. Oh, that was a good team, man. Really good team. That was the team that uh, you play to win the game. The team that started 2-5. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. Yeah. That's the great thing about sports. That's right, Herm. I love Herm. Famous J says, relax, take a swig. I joined Patreon earlier today before the Jets guaranteed division win. The Bills are done. The Jets are not going 17-0. They're going 20-0 with a Super Bowl victory. Oh, baby. <laughs> Sign me up for that. Ugh. Love it. Oh, keep it going here. Back to your calls in a moment. Our guy Gunny's watching the show. Love the show. Two GOAT Jet content creators. Gunny, you're a legend in your own right. Appreciate you tuning in, my man. Gunny's the man. Robert says, you think the Jets are taking the division as a lock? Nothing's a no, lock when a it lock. comes to the Jets, but do I think they're the best team in the division? I do. If you tell me Aaron Rodgers plays 15 of 17 games, I think the Jets are going to win the AFC East. That's how I feel. I would agree with that. Uh, I, uh, I right, right there with you, man. I mean, just, they just know Hassan Reddick. Like, I just can't believe that. It feels like we're almost – we didn't even, like, appreciate for – what it was, how much of an impact player this this guy is. We never He's had players like this. Good. Dude, and I like Bryce Huff as much as the next, but like I don't think people realize the level of upgrade Reddick is over Bryce Huff. Like Reddick's a three down player, man. He he's an all pro level talent. Like best case scenario, Bryce Huff turns out to be as good as what Reddick is right now. Yeah, I think that's what we always said. Like that could be his his ceiling. Um I think Huff's gonna fill it, kill it in Philly too, but I don't really mind if, if Reddick is doing his thing. And there it was a clever trade too, because they're probably gonna rent him for one year and then they'll get the comp pick in twenty twenty six. So basically it'll be a pick swap in twenty twenty six. Like maybe they send Philly a third, but they get a fourth round comp pick back. So it was basically the, the salary was the biggest thing, and he's the twenty second highest paid edge. Going to be 30 in September? Yeah, sign me up for that all day. Yep, no question about that one. This one is from Matt, who writes in, A-Rod will go down before the fifth game. Matt, you are a true moron. We'll see you later. All the pieces come together in a season. It can be absolute perfection, folks, because that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the Jets, led by Zach Wilson, will fucking suck ass, guys. We will see you later. First day Jets writes in, 1,400 miles from Buffalo to Houston, and Diggs can't, can't separate from sauce. Love it. I love it. I love it. Well done. Uh, should I give him Should I give him the rim shot? Let's Hold on. Where is it? I, I added new drops. I'm excited to play them, but I don't know where they are yet. Ah, oh, it didn't upload. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this for me, not you first, they just. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Rick Kent has gotten five channel nice. memberships. Oh my goodness gracious. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Okay. Oh. Ah, the following people have just received channel memberships courtesy of the immortal Rick Kent. We will shout you out, but first, I am owed a swig of Henny because of Rick. <laughs> You're not going to make it, man. Mm. <laughs> We're drinking the Bills fan tears in that Henny. Uh, Percy Daniels. <laughs> TB. Mr. Excessive Tackle. Cat Eat Food and William Justice. They all became as maniacs. Love that. Nice. All right, let's get to a couple calls and we'll go right back to the Super Chats here. Rob the Jet Fan is up next. Hello, Rob. <laughs> That's for you, Jake. The way you spoke to Peter. 
Peter, shut up! <laughs> You're giving me a freaking headache! Holy shit, Jake. <laughs> this guy thinks that a move that Rob Sala is going to make is going to determine if we win the Super Bowl. What's going to happen? He's going to call a timeout. He's going to come running out, and he's going to say to uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers, don't make that play. I got a play for you. Here you go. And he's going to throw an interception, and we're going to lose a game. He doesn't have that much power, especially offensively. He doesn't. Yes, he still has to prove himself. I'm not sitting here, um, BJF, saying that he's the best uh, uh, um, head coach in the world. But Jake is right. He's incomplete. Give this freaking guy a chance. People got him buried six feet under the ground. They need to take a chill pill. I'm tired of freaking hearing about it and stuff. These guys, like, he, he's not going to have that much power only on the defensive side. And how's the defense? How's the defense, uh, BJF? Is the defense so bad? It's great. It's great. They're offensively, everything's going to go through Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers has 99% to say about the offense. He's not going to run in the game and determine the game. I don't think so. You know what? Yeah, he makes some stupid mistakes with uh, time management and some penalties here and there. But it's like Jake said, with Aaron Rodgers, a lot of that crap gets fixed because he knows how to manage the game. So I think guys like Peter and JJ and Allen put too much on Robert Sala, especially with him coming back, Aaron Rodgers. I don't think that that's going to be an issue. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to take over. And you know what? Robert Sala offensively is going to sit there and say, do you think, Aaron? Because you know what? He doesn't have that much of a call there. I, I really don't think so. And as far as the other things, yes, I love that, um, that Buffalo lost digs. I think that makes a tremendous difference. And if no one's picking us to win the division, that's fine. We can go right under the radar because you know what, BGF? I think we have a good shot of winning the division now. Uh, and yeah. I would take the Dunze if he was available. I would be static. And I'm wow. sorry I haven't been there. He just pissed me off, Jake. Hey, hey Rob, you're, you're allowed to rant and rave on this show anytime, man. I I love it. I'm going to give you some advice from our quarterback, though, to try and settle you down. R-E-L-A-X. Relax. All right. Take it easy. I love it, Rob. Rob writes in. He says the following. Other than the Texans and 49ers, which of the Jets' 2024 matchups concern you, if any? I don't think I'm concerned by anything. I think division matchups are always tough, even New England, until proven otherwise. Like, until the Jets soundly beat them. Like, that could be a competitive game uh, for a while. It's the NFL. Most games are within the score going into the fourth. But I think the toughest matchup on paper is the Niners on the road. If they have to go in, in, to London and they play the Jags, who always go to London, I mean, that's not easy because the Jags have familiarity with that. So, like, I could find something from every matchup, but, like, I don't think I'm concerned with any matchup. I don't I don't think the Jets go into any game this year, BGF, where it's like we'd be shocked if they won, which is wild considering what we have been through as Jet fans the last decade. No, it's like the, the biggest opponent just feels like the, themselves almost and, like, what they – and just the unknowns, the variables you've talked about, you know, for – months leading up to the season no i don't i don't see any game that you can't win i'm sure they'll have one game where like it's a close one with the patriots in the fourth quarter for no reason just because that's how divisional games go so i'm not really sweating like the individual games on the schedule too much boomtown just became a channel member all right i'm a man of my word <laughs> mm -hmm. ah all right more calls right now. I know what we need. All right. We need we need someone that can unify the audience. And I don't know if there's anyone better at doing such a thing than our next caller right now. It's time for another V-Man call. Hopefully he no sleeping. Adios mio. <laughs> V-Man. Hey, Jake. How you doing? What's up, V-Man? I'm doing good, man. This is, man, I was surprised by this move. But, man, you're totally right up. I mean, right now, who in this division scares you? I mean, let's be honest. Patriots are a non-factor. They're not factor. They're they're in the basement. They're in the basement until proven otherwise. All right, that you got the the Dolphins. They can't beat a legitimate team to save their lives. <laughs> and the Bills, like, 
you just lost. You have no proven what you have no proven weapons. Even if you draft a receiver, there's no guarantee they're going to hit the ground running. There's no guarantee you know you're going to find one of those, especially with where they're picking in the what was it twenty where they in the back end of the first round. There's no guarantee. You're going to, yep. Yeah, there's no guarantee you're going to get a guy that's going to hit the ground running. So like at this point, like I said. Obviously, the betters and all these experts are going to give the Bills the benefit of the doubt because they're the established team. They're the established team that's consistently won the division every year since 2020. So they're going to get the benefit of the doubt. That's obvious. But if you're looking at it from a realistic perspective, who else in this division but the Jets is probably going to end? Would you take right now to win it? Yeah. Look, I I think it's I think it's fair and. Look, health is the biggest thing, but I think, BJF, you made a great point earlier, and I'll bring it up to you after I do this. That's the end of that V-Man call. Now he can go back to sleeping. <laughs> How about V-Man, by the way? A little Dr. Evil with the dog on his lap right there. <laughs> nice uh, touch. But, like, the, the point you made earlier, like, Tua was healthy last year, despite all the injury concerns with him, played every game, like, I can't say, how do we know Tua makes it through a full season this year? Like, we could play the injury card with every quarterback right like the Bengals were not the same team without Joe Burrow like that goes without saying the Browns got off to this great start then they lost to Sean Watson and you know they were not the five and one team they were when he played last year so I I basically look at the Jets and yeah obviously Tyron Smith there's concern with injury Mike Williams other guys you could bring up I, I understand all that the biggest thing is Rodgers though if you tell me he plays 14 15 games next year I'm very confident in the Jets chances to at the minimum be a 10 win team and make the playoffs. Yeah. The Dolphins got their two free wins off of, you know, Tim Boyle and, and Zach Wilson last year. And the objectively the the Dolphins and the bills right now, see what happens after the drafts have, have gotten worse. And, and I think I will end up picking the jets to win the division uh, before the season. I did not pick them to do that last year. I picked the Buffalo bills to win uh, the division, but I do think the, uh, the losses of the B- Buffalo that we've covered, plus the, the jets, getting better um adding Hassan Reddick and now you have a number 10 pick to boot and I had major concerns about the Jets offensive line last year I had major concerns about Alan Lazard being wide receiver too I had major concerns about Dalvin Cook being washed so uh, you know and people and you you guys who are in here you know you guys are getting mad at me when I brought up all those concerns so you know I'm not being a homer maybe I'm right maybe I'm wrong but I do think it's a the it's been a significant swing between Buffalo and the Jets specifically. And I, pr- I think they will, if I had to pick right now, I would pick the Jets to win the AFC East. And that was no not my pick last year. Hey, I, I like hearing that. that. That excites me. Rick says, make it rain, baby. Rick, thanks for gifting five members. It's very kind of you. Let's get back to your calls here before we wrap with the Buffalo Jet fan. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us right now is a man who refuses to reveal the recipe for his mother's chicken soup. Charles Gorman up next. Hello, Charles. I eat and breathe chicken soup. I sleep in chicken soup. I shit out chicken soup. I piss out chicken soup. I have chicken soup sandwiches. I have chicken soup ice cream. I have chicken soup cereal. What more do you want, Jake? I want the chicken soup, man. Well, I'm not giving it to you. Well, Charles, thank you for the time. Let's go to Cali Jet Fed. He's up next to the show. What's up, Cali? Charles, we'll come back to you. What's up, J.K.E.? What's up, Jake? Uh-oh. We lost Cali there. Let's go to Charles. Hello, Charles. Oh, I'm back. Thank you. Uh, I was very surprised by this trade, but then again, Stephon Diggs is a prima donna. Uh, he kept shooting his mouth off. He wore he wore out his welcome with Minnesota, and now he wore out his welcome with Buffalo. Hopefully he doesn't do the same for uh, Houston. Uh, look, that's their problem. <laughs> I don't, I well, don't I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, I surprised the hell out of this move. I mean – does it increase the Jets' chances of winning the division? Absolutely. I mean, as much as I like Josh Allen, who are his big-time receivers outside of Diggs and Gabe Davis? Shakir is fine, but he hasn't really been used that much in their offense. Their best receiver is Curtis Samuel as of now. I think they'll drive someone, but we don't know what that rookie's going to be. Plus, they have two pretty solid tight ends in Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox. They have uh, James Cook in the backfield. Um. And their defense for right now is still pretty solid, although I'm very surprised they lost Jordan Poor to the Dolphins. Charles, thank you. BJF, your thoughts? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I also think Trey White was a big loss, and I, I think Leonard Floyd was a big loss. I think Matt Milano will see coming back from injury, and the Jets or the Bills also <clears throat> started the same offensive line combination all, all 17 games last year. Seems like it'll be tough to reproduce. And and the Jets defense have given has given Josh Allen fits. So it's gonna come down to those division head to head matchups. I just think I'm not like afraid of the Buffalo Bills or Miami Dolphins no, personally. The, the Jets have beaten the Bills the last two years with Zach Wilson yeah. at quarterback and the Dolphins are fraudulent. I'm sorry. We beat a good team. You didn't No, the Dolphins, I mean, I think they have a really scary floor. Uh, because they, they again they they only beat I think the only they had one win last year against a team that was above five hundred and they yeah. and the were bad on the road so you could explain that one right it was really like an unstoppable force immovable object there something had to give and that trend went back to the previous season and again they they have no pass rush right now they lost their top three sack guys and two of their top three offensive linemen and they lost their their uh Baker their their linebacker so. Miami Dolphins could easily have like a bottom 10 defense. Oh, injected into my brain and my veins. <laughs> Peter writes in Jets will win 14 despite Salah. In spite of Salah is what he meant to say. Peter, you got to stop, man. If you think the Jets are going to win 14 games and you're not going to give the head coach any credit for that, that is delusional out of you, man. You're better than this, Peter. I love you, but I got to do it to you. Just shut the f*** up. I did not ask for the dumb opinion that came out of your ass. So shut the f*** up. I mean, if Salah wins 14 games, he's going to win NFL Coach of the Year, just so you know, Peter. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. He, that's the <laughs> just so you know how this works. Ray <laughs> writes in, did you see Nick Faria's tweet about Riddick? I wouldn't write stuff like that unless I knew for sure. What do you guys think? I didn't see what Nick said, so I have no uh, idea. I did see that. So there was that, I think you quote tweeted, there was that kind of bogus uh, article about how Hassan Reddick was like chasing sacks um, last year instead of like playing disciplined defense. And I think Nick quote tweeted saying, you know, there might be something to it. And I think he was getting ratioed pretty thoroughly in that <laughs> opinion. But I like I Nick. Nick. He's he a good dude. Some Eagles copium there. Now Nick's a great guy. Yeah, but he covers both. He's on both sides. So he's look, an Eagles fan, but he covered the Jets. You know? Okay. So I, I mean, I think that says all we need to know. I, I, look, I watched five games of Hassan Reddick's film last year, and let me just tell you guys, you're going to be excited that he's on the team. <laughs> dude, this is why we bring you on. You watch the film. I love it. Yeah. The big fella says, Charles, how much for the recipe? I look. If I really wanted to, I could pull together. I think thousands of dollars from as maniacs to get that recipe that's that's the demand for charles what is the soup uh, it's it's a legendary soup man uh, have okay. you heard about it have you seen the clip where it all started no i you know i feel like i should play it because we get new listeners all the time obviously people are now coming on board the 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 jake asman bandwagon here so i appreciate everyone Who's tuned in, but this is a storyline that dates back quite a while. Hello, Jake. I just had dinner. Uh, I had a couple of servings of chicken soup. My mother's homemade chicken soup. Hey, Charles, I made some of that chicken soup. It was delicious. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, I know it was delicious. I made some of it. I love to eat, so what can I say? <laughs> Send it this way, Charles. <laughs> The only thing that can make this night better is some Charles Gorman mother's chicken soup. Hello, Charles. Hey, Charles! I need some more of that chicken soup! It's Lenten season for us Christians slash Catholics, so... I need some of it, Charles! And I'm sorry I didn't have any chicken soup today. You said I've got seen enchiladas! I had a calzone for dinner. I need it, Charles! It was delicious. Where is the recipe, Charles? Anyways, uh... I love to eat, so what can I say? <laughs> oh my god, that exceeded my expectations. Yeah, uh, just, <laughs> that, that's why we now have a uh, Charles oh, Chicken Super Voji for Asmediacs. <laughs> just, just I have no words. I have no words. Uh, it's, it's it's too funny, man. <laughs> Eric Cooper says prime time <laughs> games. San Francisco, Houston, Pittsburgh, one of our rivals. So that'd be one, two, three. I think the Jets are getting six primetime games. So I think you're missing, you're missing what you have four there. I think you're missing two. Yeah. They, they, they drew, they drew a good audience even with, uh, without Rogers. I think the, 
the home opener and then the Eagles game were like the two most watched regular season games. Chiefs to, Chiefs game as well was top five yeah, for the year. I was up there too. Uh, Jim Jam Bad or Brad, excuse me. Jim Jam Brad says blaming Sal is like blaming a race car driver for not winning with a car that's missing a wheel. <laughs> I mean, it's like I, I'm not saying Robert Sala is this great coach, but like. When you talk about Robert Sala, it's like he's Adam Gase. And the way people discuss Joe Douglas, it's like he's Ozzie Newsome or he's Howie Roseman. And I just think it's it's completely unfair. And it just it drives me crazy, man. Like, I, I think the best thing I could say about Sala is that it's incomplete. But Douglas is anointed as the savior of the franchise. And it's like he's going into a sixth year. Like, they, the team should be pretty good by now. A lot of GMs wouldn't have made it this long if they took Zach Wilson that high and he busted out the way he did. Rodgers getting hurt gave Joe Douglas a mulligan, and because of that mulligan, Salah survived. But, like, we we all agree average quarterback play would have would have put the Jets in the playoffs. Then why is Robert Salah being blamed for having Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, and Trevor Sibian this past year? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. The math doesn't math, and it drives me nuts. Well, yeah, especially I think, la and again, this offseason has been awesome for JD, probably my favorite so far. We'll see what happens to the draft. Last offseason, obviously, it was horrendous. And I think like when Rodgers went down, you knew Zach Wilson wasn't going 17 games. So they they decided in that moment, we're going to see Tim Boyle on the field this year. And to me, that was an unforgivable. You know, and people want to make fun of Carson Wentz. Well, Carson Wentz is a backup. He's good enough to be the backup to Mahomes. He's good enough for Andy Reid. So that that was an egregious mistake. We'll, we'll see what happens with Salah. But uh, again, no... And and the the comparisons that people give, people say, "Oh, well, the Browns made the playoffs, dude." I would fire our entire staff and hire Kevin Stefanski if I could. I would I would fire every everyone and hire Mike Ray, Mike Gable as uh, Peter called them, Mike Gable and uh, and Obi Wan Kenobi over there in Tennessee <laughs> if I could. But that that's a false equivalence. The Browns got to go five and one with their starter. If Aaron Rodgers got to play six games, the Jets are probably knocking on the door of the playoffs. And when when Watson went down. What the Browns accomplished without their starter is not that different. They were a middling 500 team who caught a 30 piece to the teeth with Joe Flacco throwing back-to-back -back picks. I'm sure Tim Boyle or Zach Wilson could have thrown back-to-back -back picks in the, in the first round of the playoffs too if they got a front-loaded 5-1 and one start from Aaron Rodgers. There's no example or even um you know Mason Rudolph went 3-0 and with Pittsburgh. Mason Rudolph's stats versus Tim, versus Tim Boyle and Zach Wilson is not even close. So there's no example you could give of a team that had that level of an aptitude, that quarterback play with that amount of turnover on the offensive line, who's made it. And Hackett sucks. I'm not going to defend Hackett, but you know why Nathaniel Hackett is a court, is the quarter of the New York Jets because they had to do it to get Rodgers. And Michael Floor got fired because Zach Wilson couldn't hit a freaking check down pass. All right. The Mike, Michael Floor might end up being a decent play caller in this league. You saw the drop off. You saw Flacco and Mike White and and John Johnson and bums off the street could push the ball and, and move and move it in Michael Floor's offense. There was creativity and stuff. So it I don't know what to type. People say, Oh, you can't blame everything on Zach Wilson. Dude, when you when you take a historically bad quarterback, there's ripple effects throughout your team. It's not his fault. He didn't draft himself, but it is what it is, man. We just gotta move on and let's let's just forget about last season. Let's evaluate this season. If the Jets start two and six and Aaron Rodgers is healthy and they're like an undisciplined mess, and there's all I'll I'll be right there with Peter. I'm just not quite there yet. I, I mean, look, Peter's calling for Salah's head now. Could you imagine the first preseason game if they go three and out? Oh, man. Yeah, they, they got to get off to a good start, man. I don't want to hear like the WFAN nonsense. If they start one and two. Oh, they need a they need a good start. You're right about that. The salty teacher. Oh God, I'm gonna have to drink more now. The salty teacher has gifted five memberships. Boom. Boom! Boom! Money, 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 money. Congratulations to all our new channel members, the Salty Teacher coming through for members of the audience, which is always, always very cool to see. I would shout out the members, but I'm having a hard time finding who they are. Here we go. Percy Daniels, TB, Mr. X no, I already read those names. Oh, I'm a mess right now. Hold on. BJF, want to give people their due. That's awesome. Uh, generous. I know. We have the best listeners. I want to. Here we go. Shout out to the following listeners who were just gifted as Maniac memberships. I can't. God, dude. StreamYard with YouTube live streaming. They need to do a better job. I'm just. I'm ranting right now. 
I can't find it. While I look for it, let me get to another call, and then we'll shout it out. But Salty Teacher, thank you to everyone for that. One last call with BJF, then I'll stay on and get to more. Zach Miller up next. Hello, Zach. Hello. I've been on this show before. What's up, man? Um, I have a little, like, um, draft thing. Go ahead. Uh-oh. Bad internet, Zach. Call back. Let's go to Dre. He's up next. What's up, Dre? What's up, my guys? How you guys doing? How you feeling on this beautiful Buffalo Friday feeling? They're falling, they're failing, and they're sending digs to Houston, who's going to take over the AFC South. And we just got gifted the AFC East. That's all I could ever say. <laughs> I am so tired of hearing from these tired Jet fans about Salah. Salah is my guy. I'm not, I'm giving him the seal of approval, okay? I feel like, just like everybody else keeps saying, but it bears repeating, because we're Jets fans, we all have to understand this. We are clearly stubborn. We clearly do not like logic. We clearly do not like, you know, we, we, we bank on things like loyalty. Oh, I've been a fan of this team for 40 years, for 30 years, for 20 years. They've never given us anything good. Then they give us one thing and we hold on to it. Oh, they, we, we believe. We got to believe. That's why most Jet fans are actually Mets fans because of that psychosis. <laughs> and it's like things are bad, but you believe that it could be better. And I, and I, and I shake my finger at you, Tug McGraw, because that's the reason why when you started the whole you got to believe, and that's where we are. And, but for some reason, Salah seems to rub people the wrong way. I don't know why. But he's not a Parcells. He's not uh, grab the grab your your face mask and yank you around. He's not that kind of of coach. And it's like it upsets people when they see him on TV and he's looking like he wants like like a van is gonna burst and he's gonna just drop dead from an aneurysm. Like he's watching the stuff that we're watching and he's get, his face is telling the story that we feel, but we're upset about that. It's like, yeah, I would be upset too. I would probably like burn the sideline. They'd be like, keep a, a flame, a flamethrower by me. I have to set something on fire. If I'm so upset. Yeah, but right. it's like, Oh, he doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. I don't understand it. It's like people all of a sudden forget uh, that wins and losses are now 120% based on the head coach and not based on, like, gameplay or, you know, on the field at all or, like, having the better quarterback or actually having a quarterback. Let's crucify the guy who hasn't coached a team with any kind of quarterback play, yeah, at least NFL level. Let's just let's call it what it is. Anytime we've gotten any kind of mediocre play from Mike White, all of a sudden Mike White starts slinging the ball. We got 400, 600 yards, eight touchdowns, ridiculous comeback, all kinds of stuff. But, no, he doesn't get credit for that. So, hey, Trey, you're right, man. It's fair. It, it, it's just very frustrating to me because it's like people love Mike Rabel. He won less games than Robert Sala last year. You need a quarterback where you can't properly <laughs> evaluate a head coach. Bill Belichick's supposed to be the greatest ever, right? He lost to Robert Sala in his final game ever. So all you people who think that Robert Sala is Hitler, you're morons. I'm sorry. I can't take it anymore. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm not dealing with it. All right. When did Robert Sala become Mussolini? Like I'm not like it's crazy to me, man. He's not gays. He's not coat tight. He has built one of the best defenses in the league. Like they have a top five special teams. They didn't quit on him. They won three of their final five. Peter's point earlier. Oh, well, did you see what happened against the Eagles? You mean when Craig James was locking up dudes because Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed weren't there and they beat the six? That was an odd game Eagles? to bring up. Oh, just drives me crazy. BJF, you're the man, though. I appreciate you coming on every week. This was a lot of fun. <laughs> this is a good one, man. I'll see you guys next week. Ladies and gentlemen, subscribe to the Buffalo Jet fan. He is one of the all-time greats. His channel is popping off with tremendous content, so definitely check that out. I'll take more of your calls. Yankees trying to hold on here to a 4-3 lead in extra innings, so I'm a little distracted here watching both games, but we'll do what we got to do. Rick says, only the best callers on the Jake Asman show. Look, agree or disagree with me, one thing you can't disagree is what Rick is saying. The best callers call into the show, even the people that don't know what they're talking about. I won't name any names. 
but we love it. We welcome all viewpoints here. But if you say something stupid, you get sent to stupid town. And if you really cross the line, we'll see you in the shadow realm. Those are the only rules we have. Matt writes in with a super chat. And StreamYard's not cooperating. So the salty teacher who was nice enough to gift five memberships, if you got one, make sure you thank him because I don't know who specifically got one. It's not coming up for me. Matt says, I'm just here for Charles' mom's chicken soup. Aren't we all? Aren't we all? Let's go back to Zach and see if his internet's working a little better this time. What's up, Zach? Is this better now? Yes, sir. So far, so good. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, so I, I really don't understand why people are dissing on Robert Solid when, I mean, he's he's had the worst quarterback play in, I personally think of all, in all of NFL history. Just, Zach Wilson sucks. And it, I, I feel ashamed having the name Zach because of how horrible he is. But um, my whole my whole prospect of what I was trying to say before was, if say you know for a fact Chicago, this is whole draft. If Chicago is going to go for Rome Odunze, right? So if he's going to get picked by Chicago, and you have to say trade up to eight, would you rather do that, or would you would you rather say if say you find someone say Raiders or Saints to trade back to recuperate a, a second round pick, would you do that? Which one? Which which one? So get the second round pick or take Roma Dunze of the scenarios? Yeah. I, I think I would take the second round pick. That that's what I kind of figured. Just because O line, O line, O line. That and it's such a good receiver class, so I feel like I'm getting a really quality good player in the second round and then I still have the third round. I, I, I think if you're talking about a second round pick, I would do that. If you're talking about a third round pick, I probably would just take a Dunze at that point. I think my line of demarcation is the second round pick. Yeah, and Cal, <laughs> whatever his name is, because he's he's irrelevant. Cow cow herd is a cow word. Ah, <laughs> uh, you got him there, Zach. I mean, I I don't know if Kyle is coming back from that one after Zach just roasted him. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'm annoyed because every time I play a drop, if I don't play it once, it buffers. So I got to play all the drops, and then it won't buffer going forward. Very annoying. Speaking of Colin Cowherd. Aaron isn't as committed as a lot of the young guys. He's not going to sit and watch game film all weekend. And I think he's aging faster than other guys. Forget about his vaccine and political opinions. Aaron's football IQ isn't very high. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Robert says, Salah just needs the stash to be Hitler. I mean, that's how some of you Jet fans talk about him. It's crazy. Also, I mean, the, the Diamondbacks tying this game up here. What are we doing? Come on. That Verdugo pimp shot home run to give him the lead should not be for naught. Uh, but yeah, look, I mean, like, I, I'm not saying Salah is this great coach, but like, Peter wants Mike Gable. He won less games than Salah last year. It's almost like you need a quarterback to properly evaluate a coach. Do you people realize how hard it is to win seven games when Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle, and Trevor Simeon are your quarterback? Like, it's crazy to me, man. Look, you're going to get your wish. If the Jets don't win this year, Salah's going to be gone. But who hired Salah? This GM whose feet you want to kiss and touch and make sweet love to, boy green style. It's enough. Let's go to Cali Jet Fan and see if we can get his internet working. What's up, Cali? Yeah, what's up, Jake? J A K E. What's up, baby? What's up, man? Uh, listen, man. I don't. I don't talk a lot on here. I just usually call. You know, when uh great moves happen, I call to say things. But uh, let me ask you a few questions. Let me, let me just let me just ride with this for a minute. Yesterday, I heard your show, and you let that cow, cow, whatever the fuck his name is. Listen, Jet fans. Jet maniacs, uh, Asman maniacs, let the let the ignorant people be ignorant. Don't give them no fuel to their fire. On this channel, it needs to be positive, and let's talk about our team. Let's not talk about all that talk that these people, because we know they're a bunch of idiots anyway. So why are we wasting that time? And I heard you yesterday, Jake. You. You really was going off on the man, and I'm like, why are we wasting our time on this guy? We know he, you know, we went, we know he don't know what the hell he's talking about. Why are we wasting our time on him? Let's waste our time on the players that we just picked up. And to say this year, this year feels good because we made a lot of moves. 
and I think there's more to come. So the gods are blessing us. Look, Stefan Diggs is gone. The gods are now looking down on us now. We should all be talking about the good things that's coming, not this ignorant stuff from these people who don't know what the hell they're talking about. That Cut all that other stuff out, man. We, we don't need it. This is a positive year. And we need to start talking positive and leaving the negative where it is behind us. Because like you said, Jake, when we're, when we're 14 and 3, you want to go back and tell the people, now, what were you saying in the, in, in the off season? This is what we need to start doing and keeping this positive energy here with us. Leave that negative stuff out. Leave all the car, what, what is his name, Colin, Carl Hurt, leave all them people out. Let's keep all our focus and all our positive energy right on your channel, Jake. Right on your channel. Let's go. I that's what it. we got. That's what we need to do. And then the, let me ask you one more thing. I get it. The Chiefs are good. But who defense you think is better? Ours or the 49ers? Are they about even or, or is the 49ers a little bit better than us? Look, I think it, I think the Jets have maybe the best defense in the league if if they if health holds up and Rodgers is healthy so they're playing with more leads like that's how good the Jets defense could be like oh. this idea they're going to take a step back I mean they they upgraded they went from Bryce Huff to Hassan Reddick like it's it's scary how good they could be at least on paper right so let me say this to you the Super Bowl and I I, I looked I did a little research on how many points the Chiefs scored in the first half nobody talks about it but you realize the 49ers held them to only three points in that whole half. The only thing with the 49ers is they couldn't score. And then the second half, they was just blitzing them like crazy because, um, what's his name, Brock Purdy really couldn't see where they were coming from. It come from, the to me, the inexperience. Now, if you had an experienced quarterback in that Super Bowl, in that second half, even in the whole game, I think they would have beat them because – um, because of, of what's his name was not really doing it. He wasn't doing all that he used to do. He was getting hit. He was, they were offers wasn't doing a lot. So I really think if they had a good quarterback that can look at those blitz and see where the people are coming from, 49ers beat them. And I think if we face them, I don't, I don't have a worry that we won't have a, have an issue beating them. So they got to it's a year now. to your league, Callie. It's a year to your league. Who knows if the Niners will be back or the Chiefs will like, that, will have injuries and they'll be back. That's why like. Every every team starts 0 and 0, and I think when you just look at the rosters, which is all we have to go off uh -huh. right now, if you True. remove the word Jets from the helmet or the name, and you just objectively look at the talent that this team has in place, it's one of the more talented teams in the league. That's why I'm very encouraged by what they can do this year. Yeah, and and I personally, the lineup we got, it's <laughs> teams are going to have to. If they don't have, they're going to have to beat us, but they're going to have to beat. They're going to have to beat Rogers. And Amen. that's hard to beat because he knows how to beat you. And this team now with this quarterback, like you said, we got to stay healthy. You know, everybody's saying, oh, we got to go through a healthy season. Let's get healthy through right, do the, do the, um, do camp. Let's hope everybody's healthy through camp because people get hurt in camp before we even start the season. So we got to pray that everybody's healthy through camp. And we start the season off and then pray everybody's healthy through the season. Because well this year, this is our year. This is our year, Jake. All you Jet fans out there, this is our year. Keep this channel positive and get all that negative, all that in no crazy talk that people are talking. Don't bring it here. We don't want it. Jake, if you hear it, don't even talk about it. Let's talk about the goodness of this team. J -A -T -S, Jets! 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 Woo! <laughs> well done, Callie. Well done. I love it, man. I love it. We got to weed out the negatives, though. Like Peter Castro is having a conniption today. Zach sucks, but Salah as bad. What are you talking about, man? Come on. Peter, you're better than this. I'd rather be the Jake Hasman heel than the Robert Sala truther any day of the week. But it's weird because I don't see myself as a heel. I think I'm a realist. I don't want to hear none of that shit. You do not room for no damn New England to win shit. Come on, Peter. You're the same guy who said they're going to win 14 games in spite of Sala. That's some of the dumbest crap I've ever heard.
I love you, Peter. I do. But you act like this head coach is Mussolini, and it's pretty ridiculous. Day Boss, five memberships. Whoa. Shout out to Day Boss. A tremendous, a tremendous job by him. We have gifted a lot of memberships today for fellow Asmaniacs, which is always very cool. So let's give some love to, first off, Day Boss for making it rain, baby. Money, 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 money. money. If you got a membership from Day Boss, make sure you thank him. I actually can see the list of names this time, which is great. El Bapo, SSB Daily Clips, GC Drello, John Springs, and Christian Cardenas. All gifted memberships by Day Boss. Very, very cool. Love when we get Asmaniacs coming through for each other. Uh, JR Jet has got a super sticker. Thank you, JR Jet. Appreciate your support. Pittsburgh Mike says, massively important to start the season hot. Need to go four and two. Be nice to get three division games early. I think getting off to a good start is imperative. But they did last year. They were four and three and they fell apart. So, you know how it goes. Uh, first State Jet says, need to manifest some V-Man card tricks. For those who caught the first show today, V-Man was, uh, well, he was messing around with a deck of cards. I'll leave it at that. You're going to want to watch that call if you missed it earlier. It was vintage V-Man. Yankees have retaken the lead on a balk. So let's go. We're plugged in right now, folks. We're locked in to the New York Yankees. Here we go. Things are happening. Also, because we got more memberships, rules are rules. Cheers. Uh, ooh. Normally the Henny's smooth. Today I'm I'm feeling it. Big fella says, uh, big fella says, Jake, the Fontano pick for 50 subs is a lock. I'm counting on the New York Jets to come through for as maniacs. If the Jets draft Troy Fontano, Big Fella has promised to get 50 channel memberships during our mega cast when we're out in Vegas at Circa. By the way. This is the potential view you will have for our mega cast. We're going to be live from Stadium Swim. Oh, there we go. That's over his head. Let's go, Aaron Judge. There we go. 6 4. We got the lead back, baby. Love that. Guitarist just became, or he actually just gifted one membership. Wow. Cheers, man. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Ugh. Yankees has got to win this game. Not that you could really kill them if they were to lose, but they played too well to not win this game. Also, I believe with that, did we win the underdog pick that we gave for Yankees D-backs earlier, folks? Let's take a look. Let's open up the underdog app. Uh, no, we're not going to win because Mer Merrill Kelly allowed only two earned runs. We needed three. But Soto's total bases would hit. Rodon's lower strikeouts would hit. Judge has six total bases. We went higher on that. Yeah. Close. Close, but no cigar and underdog for those who participated. Allen writes in, I will give 50 memberships if my boy falls to 10. So if Joe Alt falls to 10 and the Jets take him, you'll get 50 memberships. Alan, what if the Jets trade up and take Joe Alt? How many memberships would you get? J-Man says, Judge is heating up today. Well, I mean, you guys got to remember, he got hurt at the end of spring training. So, like, he's still trying to get his timing right. Th these are spring training at-bats for him. Aaron Judge is the least of the Yankees' concerns. Be way more concerned about Stanton and Rizzo if they're shot or not. 
I, I mean, Aaron Judge is he, he, he's the captain. He's fine. Allen says 20. I don't know, Allen. I think if the Jets end up with the guy that you said the Jets needed to tank the season for, I feel like it should be more than 20, but it's your money, not mine. I'll let the comments, the commenters, the Asmaniacs in the chat bully you to do more. Hector says, Allen don't want us to trade up for him. No, he does. Yeah. Allen said earlier this offseason he would be willing to trade next year's one. So, Allen doesn't care. He just wants Joe All. Drew says, thanks for the gifted membership. Yeah, who got the membership that Guitarist gifted? It was Drew. That's awesome. Good job, Guitarist. All right. Going to wrap up here shortly. Unless we get more Super Chats or channel memberships or all that. Fun show. Buffalo Jet Fan was on earlier, folks, if you missed it. EJ says, when are they revealing the uniforms? Uh, I, I have not heard a concrete date on that. I've been, you guys know I've been a little plugged into the uniform stuff. So I, I haven't been, uh, I haven't been aware just yet. Most writes in, can we get a New York sports Jake Asman show? Not just Jets. It's in the works, Most The, the, the uh, thing I'm dealing with now that I've moved in and starting to get settled here is, do I do it just on Patreon as a bonus perk so people will sign up for that? Or do I do the New York show on YouTube? Because the viewership is not going to be great right away. Like, you guys love when I post Jet stuff. If I did a Yankee show, it's not going to be great right away. So for the people that truly want it, if I'm going to put the hours of time and, a re and effort into it, like I'll have big-name guests on the show, I have to decide if it's worth doing it as a regular YouTube thing or putting it on Patreon. Because the way YouTube really works is, I'll let you guys inside on stuff. Unless you're a big brand, which I am not, it's hard to grow early. Like, you got to be very team-specific on YouTube. So, like, the Jet stuff is great because I have the following for that. If I did a Yankee show, let's say, it, it wouldn't do well right away. So, it's like, if I do an all-New York sports show but put it on Patreon and I do it a couple, one to two times a week or if there's big breaking news, like, I, I think that's more worthwhile for me if I'm going to make the investment to you guys to do a good show because I'm, I'm not going to half-ass it, right? If someone's kind enough to spend five dollars a month on something that is coming out of my lips you know it's got to be uh it's got to be worthwhile basically mo says whatever it is i'm down i want it between 10 a to 12 p because i don't listen to greeny <laughs> i get it man i get it not that greeny's not great it's just it's a national show you're a new york sports fan so i'm weighing all these things i appreciate the support though i really do Hopefully, best case scenario for you is I'm on ESPN New York a lot more now, which is the plan. So stay tuned for that. Tom says Bills got noticeably worse this offseason. That they did, baby. David says 28 hour investment for a one hour show. The effort shows take. Yeah, man. I mean, you guys know I don't half ass this thing with the guest quality and the topics we come up with and all the things that go into it, the money it costs to. Uh, Get the equipment and, you know, I want to make sure that if you guys are investing in me, I, I invest in you guys too, so. Dan says, tomorrow marks the five-year anniversary of the unveiling of the Gase Plague uniforms. Why did you have to bring that up? Come on, Dan. Us Jet fans are dopes. Don't forget that. And Jet fans are clueless. I mean, they're dopes. They don't know anything. This is a really good hire. Gase is a great coach. Gase is a great coach. Okay, Adam Gase is Kyle Shanahan before Kyle Shanahan. Gase is a great coach. I mean, that, that, if Colin Cowherd says it, it must be true. Big fella says we need a show at the shoe store. That's definitely in the works. I will, I will promise you before the jet season starts, Mr. Bonesy and I will be live from the shoe store broadcasting. Andrew says, imagine having to cover Garrett Wilson, Marvin Harrison Jr., Mike Williams, Brees Hall, and Tyler Conklin. Imagine Joe Douglas trades up for Marvin Harrison Jr.? Are you kidding me? Yeah. 
Robert writes in with a super chat. You think the Jets moves convinced the Bills to rebuild? No. I think the Bills were sick of Stephon Diggs and they just wanted to move on. They couldn't deal with it anymore. And he, he tanked his value, which is why the pick they got for Diggs doesn't even help him. It, it's a pick in 2025. That second round pick they got from Houston is not even Houston's pick, by the way. It's the Vikings pick that the Texans got because they traded out of the first round. They basically turned Stephon Diggs into their first round pick. Pretty good GMing by Nick Casario. The Bills are never going to rebuild with Josh Allen at quarterback. Can Clay Holmes not suck here? I mean, come on. Also, that didn't hit him. Review that. What are we doing? Uh, but anyway, no, the, the Bills are still in win-now mode with Allen, but their, their roster itself is not as good as it was. Their window was the last couple of years. Now they're paying Allen. Now they have a dead cap hit. So we're not at that point. Super chat from Sam. Thank you, Sam. J.C. Latham, pick all the way. Hope we get a safety before the draft. Is Simmons a dream? I think Simmons is a dream. I'm curious why Latham's your guy. Not saying he's not going to end up being a good player, but I'm curious why Latham is your guy. I think he'll be there at 10 for the Jets. So if you want him and the Jets are great, they could take him. John writes in. Look at the moves so far. We're all in. Trade up for a receiver. Look, if the Jets trade up for a wide receiver, all right. I'm going to lose my gosh darn bananas. I really am. It could happen. I don't rule it out. It could definitely happen. Cam writes in, Jake, start the New York podcast. We could chop it up about Cam Thomas and Brooklyn Nets basketball. They thought by bringing Aaron Rodgers in, that would make things better. It has made things worse. Come on, Gary. What are you doing? You and seven people on the on the planet would care about that. David says, what's the projected dead cap hit for the Jets in 25? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't really care. <laughs> I'm all in at 24. The Jets do have a lot of cap space in 2025, though. But a lot of that cap space is going to be absorbed when they give extensions to Brees, Garrett, Sauce, etc. Um... Dane says, Jake, don't put $5 things in your mouth unless it's a half a Chipotle bowl. We need you healthy, brother. Cole already took all the cold sore time. Your show is allotted ad hoc. <laughs> uh, NY Cursor says, are we drinking any tears this year? We're drinking all the tears. I'm going to drink Peter Castro's tears, Allen's tears, JJ's tears. When the Jets win the AFC East and Robert Salas, coach of the year, baby. I kid. But seriously, I mean, if this team's really good, there's a lot of people that got to eat crow. And if they suck, you guys who want Salah fired, you're going to get your wish. So there you go. Shelton says, Texans to the ship. They have as good a chance as any team in the AFC. Isn't it amazing what having a quarterback does for you? Isn't it amazing how that works? It's almost like the NFL is not that complicated if you hit on a quarterback. You know, remember when the Texans had the second highest odds to finish with the second pick in the draft this year? Remember when the Texans since 2020 had the worst record in football? And now they're acquiring Stephon Diggs in a trade and they're all in. It's just, it's just amazing how that works. Matt writes in, what's Brunson got to do to get some superstar calls? Man, I wish I knew. What a joke. What a joke. When I went off on this on the earlier show, if you're a Nick fan, check that out. It's just crazy. John says, the Bills just got better, just saying. 
No, they didn't. In fact, you guys got worse. All right? See ya. Into the Shadow Realm you go. I don't really look too much into, like, who we're going after and, and, and all of this stuff, but as long as, like, we're not getting no Jets guys, like, I'm good. Let's get this thing done. What you saying, huh? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. The Buffalo Bills have 43, almost $44 million in dead money to now deal with. They've lost Stephon Diggs, Jordan Poyer, Tredavious White, Mitch Morris, Gabe Davis, and Leonard Floyd. And you're going to tell me they have gotten better? Okay, Bills fan. All right. You tell me. They didn't get better. Maybe Stephon Diggs was a diva and it wasn't going to work with him and Allen. But they didn't get better. The copium is flowing in Buffalo, as the Buffalo Jeff fan said earlier. Robert writes in with a super chat. What path do you see a quarterback after Rodgers retires? They're going to draft someone and probably sign a veteran. I mean, I, th I think if you want a great example of what it looks like, the Bucks signed Baker Mayfield. It worked. Now they're a contender in the NFC. That's what you're looking at. The Bills got better. <laughs> Still laughing at that last comment. That's crazy talk. Carolina must be kicking themselves in the ass about Bryce. I, I mean, look, maybe Bryce Young ends up being good. He was in a bad situation last year, but he ain't going to be C.J. Stroud. Even if Bryce Young is good, do we really think he's going to be Stroud? I doubt it. Shows you how big of a crapshoot the draft is. The Texans tried to trade next year's one to take Bryce Young. And, all right, sorry, the Texans tried to trade up to move up one spot so they could get the first pick and take Bryce Young. Chicago wanted the Texans next year's one. The Texans said no. And then Chicago did the deal with Carolina. The, the Texans' choice was Bryce Young. They settled for Stroud. Imagine that. A year ago at this time, Bryce Young was the consensus top guy, not Stroud. A comment from Hawk I agree with. The Bills got better suited for a top 10 pick in 2025. Big strikeout by Kayla Ferguson. Let's go. Yankees are one out away. Our guy Rat Diddy's at the game right now. So, Rat Diddy, if you're watching this an hour and a half into the show, this is for you, brother. Last chance to get in. Comments, questions, super chats. Cut the line. Appreciate everyone tuned in. Reminder, patreon.com slash Jake Asman Show to join our Discord. Get the show on either Apple or Spotify or just listen on the Patreon app. You could download the show so you could take it on the go. We got one guy who works for the MTA subway system. He listens underground. So he needs Patreon to download the show and then listen on the go where there's no internet. So check that out, patreon.com. Slash Jake Asman Show. Plus, let me tell you something. Moving from New York or from Houston to New York, it ain't cheap. So your five bucks a month on Patreon goes a long way in supporting me and allowing me to continue to do what we do on this show. So thank you to everyone on Patreon. Thank you to everyone on Discord. Can't thank you guys enough for the support each and every day. Uh, super chat from our guy, King and Dreams. Flight got delayed going to Columbia, so won't make it till tomorrow. I need a donation towards my Henny Fund. This is all you, King and Dreams. Cheers, brother. Safe flight as well. Mm. Fresh bottle. Strong. Real strong. Safe flight, though. Moshe says, I subscribe to Patreon. Can't get the show on Spotify. So annoying. Hey, message me, Moshe. I'll help you out. All you need to do is take the RSS feed from Patreon and copy and paste it into Spotify, and it comes right up. So it's super easy. I can walk you through it. We'll get that taken care of. Ah, oh, base hit, 6-5. This is a stressful game here. King of Dreams with the handy emoji. Cheers. 
Perfect way to end the show. Thanks to everyone who tuned in. Wild show, Peter Castro versus myself, Buffalo Jet Band, drink into the Bills, downfall, all that, and much more. Thanks again to everyone. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. It's free to like the show. And I don't think you guys realize how much it truly helps your favorite content, guys, when you hit the like button. The down but the, Hitting the dislike bu- button doesn't do anything. So if you think you got me by doing that, it doesn't work. But the like button means everything. So hit that like button. It goes a long way. I appreciate all of you for the support. It means a lot. It's raining tears in Buffalo, says Andrew. He is right. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. And you know what we need right now? I know what we need. We need some base, base. And Jake, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Go Jets. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for base, base, and Jake. Get it started, Gator. Base, base, and Jake. Base, base, and Jake. Base, base, and Jake. Base, base, and Jake. Well, Super Jazz always cut the line And the boy Hello Dance is really fine When she's so talking about them jets My senorita, you know she gets real happy Real happy if that female look is around Hey Gator, it's a family show Oh yeah, I forgot Baby Splice and Jack Baby Splice and Jack Baby Splice and Jack Baby Splice and Jack <laughs>